Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to save a color swatch and make your own custom palette from a photo in Photoshop. If you would like the design files for this tutorial, uh, be sure to uh, check out my Patreon page where I upload all of the uh, design files for um, all of my tutorials here on YouTube. If you'd like to uh, support this channel, go ahead and check that out and I will leave a link to uh, my Patreon page in the description below. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to use a photo that I found on Unsplash. It is a resource where you can find uh, free high resolution photos that you can use for commercial use. Uh, the photo that I'm going to be using today is this one here, and I will leave a link to where uh, you can find this photo on Unsplash. In Photoshop, we are going to go ahead and create our document, clicking on New File. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to use the dimensions of 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels. Our uh, resolution is set to 72 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB color and then just background content set to white. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. To start off with, we are going to create a layout for our document here. So I'm going to do that by using guides. So I'm going to go ahead and go to view new guide layout. Under columns, I am going to do four columns and then I'm going to set my rows to six rows because I want to add six different colors here. And then under gutter here, I've got 25 pixels for columns and both rows, so they are equally spaced between them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a margin as well. For this, I'm gonna make my margin a little bit larger, so I'm gonna go 75 pixels for uh, the top, left, bottom, and right changing the values here. And then as you can see, we have a starting layout here. On this one side here, I'm gonna place my photo and then I'm gonna have uh, six different spots for my uh, color swatches. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK here. To place my photo, I'm gonna use a frame. Here in the toolbar, you'll find the frame tool here. Clicking on it here, you'll see the options here. You can choose between a rectangular or a ellipse here. We have the rectangular frame selected. And then I'm just going to use my uh, guidelines here and just draw out a rectangle. Selecting there, we see a new frame layer right here. I'm going to bring up my properties panel. If you don't see your properties panel, you can go to windows and select properties here. And then under insert image, I'm going to click the arrow here. You have a couple of options. You can find an image on Adobe Sock. You can open from libraries and then you can place from a local disk. So I'm going to select place from local disk embedded. It will bring up the file finder here. Go ahead and navigate to your file here, and then I'm just going to select Place. Here we can see in our, our Layers panel here, we have our image and we have our frame. Right now we have our image selected. I'm going to hit Command-T to get the Transform tools here, and you can size up your image and reposition it on the canvas here, and then uh, when you're done uh, with resizing it here. You can just click on OK. When you use the frame tool, it creates a smart object out of your image. So you could double click on it and you can bring up the image here. We'll go, we'll go ahead and close it out here. So we'll go Command or Control W. Brings us back into our original document here. If you wanted to resize the frame, you can click on the frame icon here and then you could change uh, the size of it here. I uh, will go ahead and uh, undo that command or control Z. If you wanted to uh, change the size of the frame and the image, you go shift click and you'll see that both uh, parts are selected here, uh, Commander Control T, and then you can change it together here. 
So we'll go ahead and uh, not save those changes there. And then there's also a double click feature. So if I double click here, we see the image is selected. If I double click again, it selects both. And if I double click again, we just have our image again. If we have the frame selected and I double click, it will select both. I double click again, we have our image there. So that's another way that you can um, manipulate the uh, frame layer here. So now that we have our image in place and using a frame, Next, let's go ahead and draw out our swatches. So I'm going to use the uh, marquee tool, so M on the keyboard. Let's go ahead and create a new layer here. And then just with the help of those guides, I'm going to drag out a rectangle here. I'm going to uh, hit D on the keyboard to get my default colors here. And then I'm going to fill this area with my foreground color that is going to be option delete for Mac. Alt backspace for PC. So we just go ahead and fill that in with our foreground color. And then I'm going to deselect Command or Control D. Moving back to my Move tool V on the keyboard here. Next, I'm going to add duplicate it uh, five more times so we fill out the rest of our canvas here. To do that, I'm going to use the Step and Repeat feature. So to make this work, I have my layer selected and then I'm going to hit the keys Option Command T for Mac users. That would be Alt Control T for PC. So hitting those keys again for Mac Option Command T. It brings up my transform controls here. I can make adjustments up here or I can drag it down. So we're just going to eyeball this here, selecting OK. And then to get it to continue to repeat for a Mac user, this, the keys will be Shift Option Command T. For PC, it's going to be Shift Alt Control T. So hitting those keys, I'm going to go Shift Option Command T for Mac, and then it will create a duplicate. And then I'm just going to hit T again, and it will continue to repeat it. And what I notice after doing that is that it's not quite aligned to our guideline. So something about this document where these pixels aren't exactly. So as I continue to repeat it, we are a little bit off. And so uh, just to fix that, I'm going to select this bottom object here and then just drag it down to align to my guideline. And then I'm going to select all these layers here. Uh, with my move tool still selected here, we see these align tools. And then I'm just going to add distribute it evenly vertically. So now we are properly aligned to the way we want it to be. And next with all these layers selected, I'm just going to go ahead and merge these layers together. So right click, scrolling down, we are going to select merge layers. The reason I did this instead of keeping these as separate layers is because we are going to use the paint bucket tool. With the paint bucket tool, if these continue to be separate layers, you would have to select each layer when you go to use the paint bucket tool. But with it as one layer, we don't have to uh, do that extra step of selecting the layers uh, before we can use the paint bucket tool. And I will show you that here. So we have our document set up. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those grid lines. So I'm going to go to view, clear guides, and then we are going to start selecting our colors. For that, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, which is I on the keyboard. Here we see it pulled up. If you right click, you'll see the eyedropper tool here. And then just hovering over the document here, I'm going to select my first color. I'm, I'm going to select a kind of a darker hue here. We'll see that it pops up here in our foreground color. And then I'm going to switch to my paint bucket tool, which is G on the keyboard. If you right click, you'll see the paint bucket tool here. If for some reason it doesn't pop up, maybe you're selected the gradient tool, you could always hit Shift G and it will toggle between the different tools. We have our paint bracket tool, we have our foreground color selected. I'm just going to click over this rectangle here. 
and it will go ahead and fill it in. Let's switch back over to our eyedropper tool. So we'll click eye on the keyboard and then I'm gonna select one of these lighter colors here. We have it selected in our foreground. I'm gonna go G on the keyboard. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that rectangle in here as well. Clicking the I for eyedropper tool. Let's go ahead and select one of these orange colors and then we'll go G on the keyboard and then we will fill that in here. Clicking I for our eyedropper tool, we'll select a lighter color here. G for the paint bucket tool, we'll fill in that rectangle. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of neutral colors. So let's go I on the keyboard here, and then let's select something from the water. Let's try a little bit of a darker area here. We're seeing a little bit of a gray. We'll go G on the keyboard, and we'll go ahead and fill that in. And let's select one more color, I for our eyedropper tool. And this time we'll do a lighter color, more of a white. And then let's go G for our paint bucket tool and then we will fill that in. And that might be a little bit too light for me. So I'm gonna go I and then let's just try a, another swatch here. We'll see it's a little bit darker. We'll go G on the keyboard and maybe that's a little bit too dark. So we'll hit I again one more time and then just try again, selecting here. And we'll go back to more of a white color, G on the keyboard, filling that in, and we have a basic color pattern. If you find that you can't quite get the color that you're looking for, you could always click on your foreground here. Selecting a color will go a little bit darker on this. Clicking OK, and then we'll just fill that in. And we have another color option there. So you could always uh, play with your image and select uh, different color options here. Now that we have our palette here, let's go ahead and save them as swatches. So I'm just going to go to my swatch panel here. If you do not see your swatch panel, go ahead and go to Window and select Swatches here. In the swatch panel here, you'll see a search bar. We have our most recent color swatches here. And then I've got a couple of folders here with different swatches that I've created. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here. We're gonna select a, go ahead and create a new folder. So let's just go, we'll call it Beach Vibes. Clicking on OK and we see our new folder here. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this foreground color, which will bring up our color picker. So I'm just gonna select this color here from our chosen swatches. And then here we see add to swatches. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it there. This will bring up the dialog box here where you can give it a name. And because you do have the option to search for colors within your swatches, I do recommend at least giving it a, um, at least naming it with um, the general color. So this is more of a blue, we can come up with the name blue C, um, whatever you want to add there, and then just clicking on OK. That way when you go to search it, it will pull up this blue color here. And then we still have our color picker, so we'll select the next one. We'll add two swatches here. Maybe this is more of a teal and you can add uh, whatever naming convention you'd like, clicking on OK, and then we'll continue to uh, do this here, add to swatches. So this is more of a, more of an orange, maybe coral if you want it to show up under coral, clicking on OK. We'll select our next one, add to swatches. So we have a light orange coral type color, clicking on OK. And then we will go to our next one, add to swatches. Let's say this is like a medium gray, clicking on OK, selecting here, add to swatches. And this one is more of like a white cream. And then just thinking of color words that you might use to search for this color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK here. And then we have our six colors, so I'm gonna select OK here. And so now you have your color saved as a color palette here in your swatch panel. If we click on this folder here, 
and then click on this icon here. You can always export your swatches here. So let's go ahead and click export selected swatches. Photoshop will automatically bring up the file presets here. We see color swatches here. You could save it here or you could choose to save it outside of Photoshop. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to navigate to another folder. I have a folder here, color swatches. Uh, let's go ahead and save it as Beach Vibes. And then it has a .aco for color swatches here. And then we'll go ahead and click on save. So let's go ahead and delete this folder here. We'll go ahead and delete these swatches. We don't see it here anymore. And then since we saved it, we can bring it back in. So I'm going to click on here. We are going to go import swatches. We see um, the, it pulled up the file folder that we saved it as. So I'm going to click on it again. Click to open. And then we see the Beach Vibes color swatch here. And it looks like it brought it in as a folder within a folder for some reason. Uh, but you could always pull that back out and then uh, just delete that there. And we have our color swatch here. So you can easily save a custom palette and share it with someone else. Thank you for watching this video on how to create a custom color palette from a photo. Again, in the description below, I will leave a link to where you can access this actual photo here. Again, if you want access to all the design files for my tutorials, then you can join me over on Patreon. For my Patreon users, I've created this template document that you can use to uh, import your photo and then create a color palette from. I've created one for a vertical image and then also for a horizontal image. In the description below, I will leave a link to where you can join me on Patreon. Thank you for the support. It helps me to keep making these tutorials. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Be sure to check out my other tutorials on how to create patterns in Photoshop. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.